Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Okay, before I start this vlog, I just have to show you the outside of Indianapolis. Um, I, the outside of Indianapolis, outside in Indianapolis. Um, I was just parked at the post, uh, a post, I was just parked at the, I cannot speak tonight. I was just parked at the post office because I was finishing up some cameos because I didn't want them to expire. But I have to show you guys outside. So we had so much snow tonight. Do you guys see this? It started snowing this afternoon. It's starting to melt a little bit, but you can still see it over here. It's like, look at this, you guys. Can you believe that? All of that snow. The trees are actually really, really pretty. But we got like, it looks like an inch and a half of snow maybe outside. So, yeah, I pulled into, I was listening to some Whitney Houston, and then I pulled into the post office. Let me hold on a second and fix my phone. Because I had four cameos to do, and I didn't want them to expire. Um, so I made sure that I got them done. I even brought my fan and everything. My fan! Because I'm not one of your fans. How are you guys doing this evening? Where is my lip gloss? There it is. I think I'm gonna use my lip gloss instead of my lip balm. Every time I hear that noise, which I actually think is like an owl, um, it reminds me of the end of the movie To Kill a Mockingbird, if you've ever seen that movie. If you have never seen that movie, then you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. But when Scout and Jim are walking home from the Halloween fair that they have at their school and Scout is dressed up as a ham. Um, and then it's weird, I was sitting there all that time and there was like no other cars there and then as soon as I leave, a car pulls up. Anyway, um, you can hear like an owl make a screeching noise like in the air in that movie. I got so emotional on this last cameo that I did and um, I sometimes do. Who, me? Get emotional? I know, right? But I sometimes do get emotional when I do the cameos for a couple different reasons. I mean, first of all, it's just so nice that people reach out, you know, for them and buy them for me. It's so nice. And um, sometimes, the, this wasn't a birthday one, but sometimes the birthday ones are, um, like, I did do a couple birthday ones, but... Sometimes the birthday ones are just like, so, un like, I, I sometimes want to shout out people on here after I've done the cameos, but then I don't want to, you know, like, ruin it for them if, like, they haven't gotten the cameo yet. But, um, like, I say this in my cameos sometimes, and it's the truth. When I was a little kid, I wasn't invited to birthday parties. You know, the only time that I went to birthday parties was if it was a friend of, like, a, if it was just like a kid of a family member. That wasn't the only time that I went to birthday parties, you know? And I don't even know, like, then I knew it. Do you ever go through something, like, when you're younger and then, but you don't really remember going through it until you're, like, older? Until I started talking about it and doing like the birthday shout outs on my drama channel and when people would ask for birthday shout outs and and that really is started from something completely different. That started from, do you guys remember like, I don't know if they still do it or not, like Good Morning America back in the day and they'd be like, and Sally Jean Smith or Judy Smith from, you know, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma turned 103 today and I love when they did that and so... That was really one of the reasons why I started doing the birthday shout outs, which is so hard now because I get so many requests every single day. Um, but I love doing those, they make me so happy. Um, but you know, when I was a kid, like I said, I wasn't invited to birthday parties. And you know, I really, I don't know how aware I was of it until doing these like birthday cameos and birthday shout outs like how much that meant to me. I, and then all of a sudden, it was like one day, I was doing this cameo, and I had this memory of, it was the weirdest thing, I had this memory of these kids in my class talking about the birthday party that they had all gone to. And 
I remember in that I was very aware when it happened that I was not invited, that I was not included, I was not part of that. And, you know, that has just <clears throat> been my experience growing up is that I, I wasn't part of things. I, um, I, I just wasn't, you know? And, um, there were, you know, a few times in school that I had a friend for a while here or a friend for a while there. And, um, and it just, you know, I, I think there was like one time too with a friend of mine. Um, I, I remember this happening. I probably was in like second grade at the time that it happened, maybe third. That I did have a friend that lived like one street over. And, um, which is so funny. He's in politics today. I know that he is. And <laughs> that's about as far as I've kept up with him. And, um, but I mean, I knew him in high school and stuff like that. I mean, we just were never friendly in high school. We just didn't talk in junior high and high school. But he and I were like friends. Like, he lived one street over. And I don't remember how we became friends. I think because we like walked home from school together or something. And we would hang out and do stuff. And I remember like one day like calling and being like, his mommy answered the phone. And I was like, can he come out and like, you know, calling up somebody and be like, can they play? And his mom being like, no, you know, whatever. And then finding out later that he had had a bunch of like other kids over to hang out and I wasn't invited when like he was like my closest friend at the time. And I remember that really, really hurting. And um, because, you know, when you're a kid, oh my God, this tree is like down in the middle of the road. That's kind of scary. Like across the road. Ooh. <clears throat> I wonder if that fell because of the snow. It literally snowed all afternoon and evening tonight. It was crazy. Um, when you're a kid, you don't really know. Like, you know, you know that kids are making fun of you and stuff, but like you don't really connect the dots. So then flash forward literally 40 years and people are like, like in the cameo requests and stuff, people are like, you know, my my daughter loves you or my sister loves you and she watches every single one of your videos on every channel or she's watched every vlog you've ever done and it would mean the world to her. Like the only thing she wants is like the, a birthday shout out from you. And I think about that, like the only thing that somebody wants is a birthday shout out from me, you know, like. Like that's a pretty crazy thing, you know, like to come like all of that, that way. And, um. There's a lot of down trees. Like that one's down in the church parking lot. God, it's crazy. It's like a huge tree. Um, I don't know. It's just it's like, it's this incredible thing. And I got one tonight. This was the last one that I got. And it was like, it, it, it really moved me. And I was, somebody reached out to me and said that they had had a tough year. And as a treat to themselves, they got themselves a cameo from me. Like, I don't know. It just, it really means a lot to me. And I just can't say it enough on this channel, like, to the point where I think people really understand. Um, how much it really means to me, you know, like. You know, like how you can say things to other people and you believe it for them, but then to like sometimes like to say the same thing for yourself is like, you know, I get a lot of requests for pep talks or people will reach out to me and I'm always like, you know, you just got to believe in yourself and you got to look in the mirror and tell yourself, I love you. And you know, like, you, you know, you're good enough. And you know, like, it sounds like that guy from, you know, Saturday Night Live, but it's the truth, you know, and to look in yourself every day in the mirror and say, I'm proud of you. And you're a hard worker and you're a good person and you're good enough and you're a good son and you're a good husband, you know, and believe those things about yourself. But I think it's sometimes easier to say those things to other people 
when you can see it in them than it is to see it in ourselves. And I really think, you know, I've really been working on this lately with really rewriting the tape in my head and really, um, you know, saying things to myself like, I am funny, you know, and um, I am compassionate and I am, you know, try to be, you know, empathetic towards others and, um, and I do think I'm a good friend and I do think that I'm a good husband and a good son. I do believe those things about myself today. I couldn't say that for a long time, you know, it was like, I talked about this on here, but it was like when Karen and I were talking on the phone and she said, you know, you're so like, you've been a lot, you've been very self-deprecating lately. I said something about like, we were talking about certain kinds of books and I said, yeah, I said sometimes when it comes to like literary fiction and stuff like that, because I feel like, well, I can talk about true crime or I can talk about this or I can talk about that, you know, but when it comes to like literary fiction that's being critiqued, like, you know, well, <laughs> But I, I'm not stupid. And she said that. She goes, you, she goes, you don't give yourself enough credit. You're very smart. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I am. And it was really nice hearing that from somebody else. But more as like a reminder to myself to say, you, Peter, you are. You're not stupid. You know? And um, you can have a conversation with the best of them. And I think that... You know, I think a lot about those formative years of when we're growing up, you know, and they say that, like, you don't really truly develop emotionally until you're, like, 25 or whatever. Well, like, all of those years of mine, I think this is true of a lot of people, but were years of, like, self-doubt, not believing in myself, alcoholism and addiction, you know, and, like, writing that tape in my head that has served no purpose for the rest of my life. It's, like... You know, and I do think that that's the difference between some people is I used to say like the difference between I used to use this as a, an example as a joke like the difference between me and Tom Cruise <laughs> I was talking about him being like a popular movie star is that he showed up to the audition I used to say back in the day because I believe that a lot that the difference between where you're at and where other people are at is that they actually, you know, they took a risk, they showed up, they, you know, they took a chance, they tried something. But I also think it's that they believe in themselves. I think it's that a lot of people really believe in themselves in a way that like the rest of us work our lives to get to the point of believing ourselves, they just do. And I don't know where that comes from. Um, you know, I, I don't. Because the reality is, and I think I'm pretty successful in life, you know. I, I get to get up every day and do something that I love to do and I have a successful marriage today <clears throat> that has taken a lot of work. I have successful friendships. I have successful family relationships, you know. I'm happy and content the majority of the time. And um, I, like I say, I have a life beyond my wildest dreams. I really do, you know. Um, like even today I was like driving around and I was like drinking coffee and you know, and I was like, God, I have such a good life, you know, I just really do. And that's not to say that every moment is fantastic because there's a lot of moments in there that are tough or hard, you know. But there's a lot of fantastic moments in there too and I don't want to miss out on those, you know, because I'm so focused on the other, but it's like... I mean, the reality is there are a lot of people out there that grew up being bullied, that grew up, you know, questioning themselves and their value. And there are a lot of people out there that, um, you know, really worked hard to work through stuff and they're very successful. So I can't use that as an excuse. You know what I mean? It's like back in the day, like, when I started gaining a lot of weight, my doctor had always told me that Depakote that I take for my epilepsy, that it makes you, like, aggressively hungry, which it does. Like, I'm hungry all the time. But the reality is, the best shape I've ever been in on my life, in my life, 
was also like the year after I was diagnosed and put on um, Depakote. That was like the healthiest I've ever been in my entire life. That I was running and working out every day and that I was eating healthy. So it's like I can't use that as an excuse, you know, and I know that. I know that it's really about having to put the work into it. I don't know. I just feel like people are so nice to me, you know? I think that's part of it sometimes is like, you know, it's not like the world was mean to me until I got on YouTube. I mean, like, that's just not my reality. You know, I mean, it's like I got sober and even before I got sober, you know, it's like I got out of high school and I ran with a popular crowd in the gay community and I had a lot of fun and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. and. You know, later people would be like, God, I always wanted to date you. You were so cute. And I was like, mm, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. And they'd always be like, but you always had a boyfriend. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I know. No, I didn't know. I didn't. I looked back on that. I think I didn't know that I always had a boyfriend. But um, I'm joking. But you know what I'm saying? Like, um, and then when I got sober... I didn't feel like I fit into a 12-step program, like, right away. That wasn't until I really met, like, Tanya. I mean, I did, but not until, like, I met Tanya and hung out with her and some other people that I really feel like I had a group of peers of my friends, you know? But, like, working in treatment, like, I, I loved that. And I had a team of, you know, people that I worked with that, I mean, I had a team of other counselors that I worked with that we... I loved working with them. We had such a great time together, you know? And I really felt like I fit in there. And at the same time, you know, I was... I had friends in recovery. So it wasn't like... Um, like, all of a sudden, I walked into YouTube and I was like, oh my God, now I'm getting all this... I mean, it wasn't like this new experience for me that I didn't have love and compassion from, you know, and was embraced by other people. I was embraced and loved by people before I got on YouTube. It's a different feeling. I don't really know how to explain it. Um, actually, you know, I was saying this tonight um, in one of the cameos. It was the last cameo that I did. That I am... I feel so in, in completely blessed that I get to get on camera and be, like, my absolutely authentic self... And people relate to it. Like, I can get on this video and I can tell stories or, you know, talk about thoughts and philosophical ideas about things or books or, you know, stories about my recovery or my childhood or whatever. And, and people want to listen to that, you know. Or I can flip a fan and talk on the drama phone or sing some stupid song and be my silly self and give my opinion about pop culture and people want to hear that or, you know, or they want to argue with it, which I think that that's great too sometimes, you know, that people want to, they have such a strong opinion about something, you know, uh, uh, that they want to have a discussion about it, which is powerful, you know, or my Peter is which people relate to or all of it. It's like, I love my Peter does stuff channel that I've started, you know, recent and recently. And it's like, I, <clears throat> I'm able to, like, authentically be myself, and people like it, <laughs> you know? It's not like I have to tone it down. And I think that's, like, where the, the be too much quote really comes into play for me, because for so much of my life, you know, I really toned it down. Even in meetings, I did, you know? I toned it down. It was like, I mean, I go to mixed meetings. It's like, don't be too gay, you know? And it's always been like that, you know? Don't be too gay. Don't be too loud. Don't be too flamboyant. Don't be too effeminate. It's always like what I heard in my head. Just so sad, you know? Because I, I wonder now in retrospect, and I really believe this to be true, had I always been too much, people probably would have loved it nonetheless, you know? Or those those that were going to be attracted to it were going to always be attracted. You know, those that were going to be like, God, I love Peter because he's too much, right? Like, they were always going to be attracted to that. And those that weren't, weren't. And so, it wasn't like... And w did I really want... 
Did I really want the validation from people that only liked me if I was a toned down version of myself? The sad reality to that is that at, at some points in my life, I probably would have answered yes to that. That I would have rather had, I would rather have had the validation from many people than just the few that mattered because I had never really had it growing up, except for like from my parents, you know, and friends of the family and stuff like that. I had really never had that kind of like validation. So it does feel good. It feels good to be able to be myself and that people like like it or they relate to it or they think it's funny or it helps them sleep or it makes them think about something or you know I don't know it's just it's cool it's the coolest thing and I think it's a really good lesson not just for me but I hope for a lot of you out there as well don't waste time in your life trying to be somebody that you're not you know, you might make a few people happy. You might make your in-laws happy for, I mean, like, I, I love that, like, I remember this one, okay. You know, I always kind of like, I wouldn't say I toned it down for my in-laws, but like, I would never try to dance or, you know, whatever. And I remember this one Christmas, it was like our third Christmas together or something, second or third Christmas together. And it would have been our third because that's when Carlos and Liliana were here visiting with Carlitos. No. No, because it would have been our second and it was before then. But anyway, and I just was like, I danced and I had, and they loved it. They were so like, oh, let's show you how to do this and singing karaoke and all this kind of stuff. And I really allowed myself to be, you know, and that was when truly like, I think, Alex's family saw Peter for being Peter and loved Peter for being Peter, you know? And that it wasn't like I was trying to be somebody else that I wasn't. And before then, I was very quiet. I was very subdued, you know? And it's like, we waste so much time. It's so weird seeing all of these trees and this grass over here that was just 70 degrees a week ago covered with snow. We waste so much time trying to make other people happy in life in ways that don't matter. It's, it's one thing to do nice deeds for people or to do things that will make their life easier or to pay them compliments. Those, I think, are good things that we can do for people. Those are helpful things that we can do. But when we change who we are to make somebody else happier. It's like, I remember watching this episode. It was a couple episodes of Roseanne actually. And I think it was when Jackie was dating Frank. Fred, Fred. And Roseanne got really mad at Jackie because Jackie was like not being herself to Fred. And they got in like this argument, I remember. And it was like two episodes before Fred and Jackie broke up and then they were never like, you never saw Fred in another episode of the show. But I remember Roseanne was like really mad at Jackie and she said, I don't remember the exact any of it, but I can just see them standing there in Jackie's kitchen. And she said, why are you doing this? Like. Like, why are you being somebody that you're not? Then he's going to fall in love with a version of yourself that you aren't. That's not even who you are. And Jackie was like, he wouldn't love who I am. And if I'm not this person, then he's not going to be in my life. And Ro Ro Roseanne was basically like, but why are, why would you want him in your life if he's loving a version of you that doesn't even exist? And basically what Jackie was saying was, because I just want to be loved. So if I have to be somebody I'm not to be loved, and you know, I get that. Like, I get that. Like, I've done that before in my life. I've been somebody I'm not so that other people will like me. And it's a waste of time. It's such a waste of time. Because the feeling is never complete inside, you know? The feeling is never like, 
solid inside. I think we fool ourselves a lot, you know, with... I think we fool ourselves a lot with... Believing, like... It's like, did you ever... <laughs> like, did you ever have, like, somebody that you really kind of had a crush on, right? And they didn't really want to date you, but they would hook up with you. And you hook up with them, and, like, maybe it's not even really that great, right? Maybe, like, they're a bad kisser and whatever, depending on where it goes, you know? But it, it's not even what you think it's going to be. But, like, for those... 15 minutes or that hour or two hours or whatever, you convince yourself that it's like everything you wanted it to be, right? And like maybe you never talk to that person again. Maybe you never see them again, right? But like you convince yourself in your head that like for that, like it felt like they loved you for that hour, you know? It's like I think we live sometimes in this world that it's okay to, I think it's okay to live in a fantasy world and I think it's okay to have fantasies you know and I I love that whole idea of like you know I was watching um I'm watching on the world of wonder app there's this whole like documentary series they do on the work uh work the world tour which is oh my god my video is out of focus hold on which is like a lot of the top girls that go on tour around the world and there's this scene when Valentina, who always talks about like living your fantasy, like what is your, like living your, you know, being in your fantasy, which is kind of like living in your fake, you know, fantasy world. She's like sitting on this like um, bus and I can't even remember what she says, but she's like, I just imagine myself like going through the Italian, like they're going through Italy and she's like, I just imagine myself going through the Italian countryside, like, and I'm so-and-so or whatever. And I think that's great. Like, I think that's hilarious. You know, like I do stuff like that too, but I think there's a difference between doing that and like stepping up into whatever your fantasy is and then being somebody you're not for somebody else or for something else. You know what I mean? Like, I have had so many friends of mine. Like, this is a good example. I've had so many friends of mine that were toned down versions of themselves because of work. And they have these, like, incredible executive positions, right? But they really couldn't be themselves. And it's like... And not just with being gay. And that's, you know, these are not just gay friends of mine. But, you know, a lot of different friends of mine. It seems like a lot of women that I know have done that in, like, executive roles, you know? And whenever, like, I've asked some questions about it, they'll say, well, you have to definitely play a game, you know? Like, women have to play a game with, you know, like, the men's group kind of thing. You know, the, the boys club kind of deal. The men's group or whatever. And I think that... There's, that's such a truism, right? But, like, at the same time, like, I don't know, it just breaks my heart. I mean, why do we think that that matters? You know, it's like, I mean, it. I think it does. I think if you, I think it definitely, is this out of focus again? I think it definitely does. Like, if you work in business, I mean, I know that to be true for friends of mine. Um, and not just women, but gay men and all kinds of people. Come on, video. It's going to stop here in a second anyway. Um, that I think that, you know, you... And then I think a lot of people would say, well, it's a business environment. So you should have to, like, you know, tongue yourself down. But why? Like, just imagine if we lived in this world where none of that mattered. And you could just be whoever you wanted to be. And people would embrace that. You know, and people would love that about you. And then you could just be your authentic, beautiful colorful, different, unique self, and all of us, you know, I mean, in, in reality, business would probably run a lot better, businesses would, you know, like, when, because we would embrace each other's differences, instead of always feeling like we have to be, like, <laughs> I don't know, in a suit or something, you know?
Okay, it stopped. Let's hope it doesn't go out of focus again. But, it, you know, I just feel like we live in this suited world. I love when I'm like, I'll see like, you know, business women, businessmen or women out, you know, and they've got like, you know, the black or the navy blue suit on. But then they'll have like a pop of color or like a Kelly Green shirt, you know, or like really like those happy socks or something like that. I love that. I think that's, you know, or like hot pink heels or something, you know what I mean? Or shoes. I like love that. I think that that's so cool, you know. It's like, um, like I'm going to fit in, but I'm going to express, express myself at the same time. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. I grabbed this off the counter because it's my water and I filled it like hours ago and it's um, <laughs> it's a little lukewarm. Mm. Hold on. This is like a trailer or something and they're like pulled over to the side of the road. Went to my meeting tonight. It was great. It was fantastic. Um, and yeah, talked about making amends. I wasn't gonna go tonight because it was cold and snowy and I didn't think a lot of people would be there, but um, there were actually quite a few people there. It was so cold. I saw my friend that I'm giving this glider to because <laughs> Alex was like, tonight he was like, well, at first he was like, are you going to your meeting? And I was like, I don't know, but it's kind of snowy and cold outside and I don't really know if I want to be, you know. And he was like, okay. And um, he was like, I was going to help you load that glider into your car. And I go, well, I'm not taking it tonight. I said, she doesn't, I can't take it. And like, she doesn't have a trunk for her car. I was going to take it to her house this weekend. And he goes, oh, I didn't know that. And it's like sitting out there and it's like covered in snow. So I told her, I said, you know, it's covered with snow. And She's like, oh, that's fine. She's like, I'm gonna. So she was telling me what she would be hopes so I could bring it by this weekend. It makes me so happy to know that somebody's gonna be able to enjoy it, you know? All these poor ferns out here that I said the other day were so pretty, they're all covered with snow. You guys, like, seriously, it's so sad. Do you wanna see? I'm gonna show you. Remember I just drove by here and I said, oh my God, these ferns are so pretty. <laughs> you guys, it's really sad, look. Do you see all the ferns? They're all, like, just droopy with snow. Oh, wow. That's what happens when it snows in Indiana. I actually like look to see, I think it's supposed to be like warm next week. Let me see. Weather. I think the next couple days it's supposed to be cold actually. It says it's 28 right now. My, my car says 25 in fog. Okay, it's day 48, so that means the snow will melt before I get up. Thursday the 50 is 54, Friday 59, 55, Sunday 62, oh, Monday 71. Oh, my Lord, Tuesday 80, 80 degrees, you guys. Wednesday 75, then it goes down, it's like the mid 60s to upper 70, or low 70s. You guys, I cannot believe this, this is so crazy. So a week from today, it's gonna be like, 55 degrees warmer than it is right now. <laughs> this is Indiana weather, I'm telling you. It's like, one day you have uh, snow and the next day you have 80 degree weather, it's crazy. What was I gonna say? I was gonna say something else exciting. I don't even know what it was. I feel like I've used so much lip gloss tonight. So after I got done filming my vlog, I did a review on my review channel. And then, I uh, did a drama video <laughs> on 
on uh, Gabby Hanna. <laughs> and then I got those videos up and I was getting ready to do a Pete Rosemans video and that was like when I decided that I was gonna go um, to my meeting. So I uh, went upstairs and I put on these pair of jeans that I have now and they're kind of like, they're well, I usually get my jeans, uh, what do you call it, 30 length, and I'm like 5'10", so they come up like right on my ankle, and I like it that way because I wear Birkenstocks mostly, you know, or like sneakers, and so they sit like right at the top of that, and, um, but I wore my Ugg boots tonight, and, um, because <laughs> I'm so fancy like that, and, um, these jeans, like, it was weird. Like, I don't, I, I had just gotten these for Florida, so I hadn't worn them with my Ugg boots, and they're like, they were really tight, like, over the boot, and it, um, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't put my jeans inside my boots. I wear them over my boots. So anyway, and I was like, these other jeans, oh shoot, I, they're in the washer. I forgot to put that stuff in the dryer. Um, these other jeans that I had washed, and dried, no I didn't dry, <laughs> that's what I just said. These other jeans I had in the washer that I had been wearing, they're like, I cuff them up, and those are what I had been wearing with my Ugg boots this winter, This that pair and another pair that are kind of like, they're more like of a boot cut jean, you know? I know this is such a stupid conversation. But anyway, I was almost like, these jeans I can't wear them, they're not comfortable with, they ended up being just fine. I forgot how cozy Ugg boots are. I started the true crime book, but I'm like 15 minutes into it. Like every time I get into my car, I'm just like distracted by listening to something else. Like listen, I've been listening to a lot of music the last couple days. So when I get off of here, I'm gonna listen to a little bit of that, probably half an hour or so. And yeah, I think that's it. The exciting stories of my life. How many times have I sipped from this cup? Alex was just doing some stuff around the house tonight. Oh, he was fixing our Google lights and because our Alexa was like all messed up. So we got it all fixed. So now we can hear our rainstorms again when we sleep. It was so nice. He came upstairs tonight. He was so excited. He was like, do you hear it? I was like, oh my God, I love it. And I was snuggling and cuddling with little Boo Radley. Oh, Boo Radley tonight. He didn't want to eat any of his dinner. He only ate like a quarter of it. And so I said to Alex, I said, he only ate a quarter of his dinner. Well, Alex had fed them, and then I noticed, because I went down to go get the plate to pick it up, and I noticed that Tucker kept on wanting to run down to the basement. So I was like, what is Tucker doing in the basement? So when I came home from my meeting, Alex was going back and forth between upstairs and downstairs. He was doing like, um, doing stuff with our modem as well. And so, fixing this Alexa thing, I don't understand what he was doing. Anyway. But he got it all fixed, so that's all that matters. Because <laughs> he's technological and I'm not. So anyway, I said, did Boo Radley eat any more of his dinner? And he goes, I don't know. And I go, what do you mean you don't know? And he goes, well, I put it back down there. And I go, and then he just kind of looked at me and he goes, Tucker, Tucker, come here, Tucker. And he goes, I go, is he down in there eating his food right now? I go, and I wondered why, like when I came in, Tucker like came down the stairs barking at me and then he went right down into the basement. I was like, that's what he's doing, he's down there. So, Tucker ate like half of Boo Radley's food and all of his food. I'm like, he is gonna be pooping late tonight. So, I took him out before I left and he didn't, he peed but he didn't poop. So, hopefully he'll do that when I get home. The little guy is so funny. Boo Radley looked like, I was like, Boo Radley, you're gonna be awfully hungry. He looked like he was not bothered. <laughs> They eat so health. I mean, they eat so well that Boo Rally does that about once a month. He won't like eat his dinner for like a night or two, and I always get like real freaked out about it. I usually talk about it on here, and then it's just completely fine, and he goes back to normal again. Tanya always says maybe it's like the weather changes or their allergies, and it makes it's may, it maybe it is the weather changes. You know, here it's snowing, and Boo Rally's not one to eat, so that could be. I don't know. He acted fine all night tonight.
I don't know, change of weather. We have a lot of friends of ours right now that are like making their dogs um, own food. Sarah has always done that for her dog because she really believes in um, like that kind of like care for your dog. She's always like, she's always meal prepping her dog's meals and she makes it like with pea. I don't know everything that goes into it. She gets like chicken broth and like chicken or like, I don't know, some kind of meat and peas and stuff. She's always talking about how she likes, I think peas. I don't want to speak out of turn because if I say something, then somebody will say, oh, that's going to kill a dog. And like, I'll just, and she may have said peas and it could be carrots and I don't know. So I don't know what she puts in her food. All I know is that her dog loves it. <laughs> And all I know is that it's almost LaCroix season again. And I've got to go get my cases of Diet Coke and LaCroix. So anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Just cuddling up to Mr. Boo Radley tonight. Tucker, I think, is starting to learn how to, like, for a while there, he would, like, try to play with his toys, and then it was kind of sad, but he would, like, start playing with it, and then, like, after literally, like, 10 seconds, 5 seconds, <clears throat> he would just set his head down on it. He got kind of, like, frustrated because he couldn't, like, you know, grasp. Like, he likes to play with the strings. But now, I looked, the other day he was playing with his lady, his little uh, lamp chops, and I said, I said, Alex, I said, look, I said, Tucker's playing with lady. And he was playing with Lady again, and so I think he's starting to figure it out, how to play with his uh, teeth gone, how to play with his toys again. They eat treats fine. <clears throat> we just have to cut their treats up in half. And then um, their food, they just like, I mean, they are eat their food like crazy. People are like, they ask all the time, how do they eat their food with no teeth? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I really don't. Um, I think they still, did she take, have all their teeth? I don't know if they still, whatever, but. She told us, she said, they'll do just fine. She's like, dogs do just fine eating. They have no problem with it whatsoever. And they haven't at all. Like, they eat faster now than they did before they had their teeth taken out. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> there was something else I wanted to talk about on here tonight. Now I don't remember what it is. Yeah, I don't know why Boo Rally doesn't eat every once in a while. But I always get real worried about it. And it usually lasts a day or a day and a half. And then he's completely fine. And then he's, like, eating again. And I'm always like, Alex, you have to get chicken and you have to get rice and we have to make chicken and rice. And then we make all this chicken and rice and we rather like snubs it and hardly like eats any of it. They're, it's so funny. They're not like, like I was telling Alex, like when I went to um, the vet the last time, she like was trying to give them some peanut butter and neither one of them likes peanut butter. Like they wouldn't eat it. And they're so used to not eating human food. Like the other day, uh, Alex had some popcorn. And I said, give them each a piece of popcorn. They might enjoy some popcorn. And he goes, they won't know what to do with it. And Tucker like looked at it and licked it like once and then turned his head like he didn't want it. And Boo Radley, I don't know how they know the difference between human food and dog food. I really don't. Boo Radley, like, carried this piece of popcorn around with him until it was, like, soggy. It was so funny. And, <laughs> but they, um, like, they won't eat human food. They just won't. I don't know what it is. I don't, And I don't know how they know the difference between human food and dog food. I really don't. Or maybe they're just so used to the dog food that we put down or where we put it down and, you know, at the time that they eat and stuff like that, that that's what they're used to. Um, but I started telling a story about a friend of mine anyway um, and her dogs, but, or really her dog. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I love Tucker and Boo so much. I miss Pee, Pee a lot. His birthday was the other day, and Alex and I just laid there in bed, and we looked at old pictures, and 
this video that Alex had put together when PB passed away, put this whole video together to this Rufus to Soul song. And um You know there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about that little guy. I very much feel his presence around. <clears throat> it's strange because um I have this very clear picture. I don't know. I had a dream about it one time and like I it, it's so weird like when I have ideas about other things to do with like afterlife or you know it just in thoughts about things or whatever it's like I don't have this like cement picture of what things look like but I have this very concrete cement is that the word I'm looking for concrete I have this very cement concrete I have this very concrete picture of what where my mom lives like where she is in heaven and it's like this long country road, like this gravel road. And somehow I know that in the dream, like she's close to, but not right, like not right next to, like my aunt and uncle live here and my grandma lives here and friends of my mom live around. But they, like, she's on this long country road that basically if you walk in the other direction, you can just go wherever you want to go. You know what I mean? I think heaven's very much like that. But you come down this long country road that kind of just comes around this path and all of a sudden my mom's house is just like out there and she's up against this like pond that has like, you know, those weeds growing out of the side of them and um, just kind of mist in the evening over the pond and, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of so there's no doors and really you know there's all these windows like the door it's all like the, it's it's white like clapboard house and it uh has all these big windows and like this door that just has no doors on it that just walk right out from and it's like this big room is like a bedroom which kind of looks like our bed like our bedroom now that it reminds me of how my mom had it when she was there and so it's just like this big bed that's like all white and like these lamp like these lamps but these lamps are just like glowing orbs you kind of like touch and they go off and on and my mom's always like sitting in the bed reading and pee, pee sleeps on the other side of her and um and like he gets up in the morning and he like jumps off the bed and he goes down and, and he like walks along the water and I very like it's very strange like I very clearly have this picture of this image, you know, of how it looks, and, um, <laughs> I can see him turning his little head, his little ears. Tanya put this thing up on her Facebook the other day. I was going to read it on here. Maybe I'll read it on Peterisms, but it was something like... It was something about... That we get pets, you know? Knowing that... It, the meme didn't say this, but basically knowing that, you know, at some point, they're going to pass. And yet get them anyway because of all of the amazement that comes along with it. I'm actually going to turn in here and read you guys this. Oh my lord. That hasn't happened in a long time. Oh lord. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> I think I need a new bean bag. That hasn't happened in a long time. Do you guys remember when my old car that used to happen? Okay. I wanted to read this meme because I thought this was such a meaningful meme. Tiny's been putting up all the memes lately. All the powerful memes. Okay. It's got a little dog's picture on it. It says, 
Dogs' lives are too short. You know the pain is coming, but there is such beauty in the hard honesty of that, in accepting and giving love while always aware that it comes with an unbearable price. Dean Koontz. Um, and it's so true, isn't it? It's like... I remember talking to the vet about pee-pee, and I get so sad sometimes, like, now, like the other night, like, Boo and Tucker, like, they could tell that we were upset, and and Alex just, like, pulled them over, like, really, really close and was holding on to them. And, um... Because I think it's hard, you know, like, when you've been through it, like, especially recently, that you know that, like, I mean, Boo and Tucker are not gonna be here forever, you know what I mean? It's so funny, they act like such puppies. But, like, you know, Pee-Pee was six months before, too. Um... Boo Radley sleeps a lot more than he used to. Tucker is like, I mean, he is like puppy central. And, um, so. Whew. I don't know. It's hard. They're going to be 12 this year. Pee-Pee would have been 15. Mm. Yeah, but I think that they knew, like, something was going on and we were sad and they couldn't figure it out, you know? And I think dogs are so perceptive about that. And they didn't know what was going on, you know? Poor little guys, <laughs> but... What are you gonna do? They can't fix it. I thought we would get another dog by now, but it just doesn't feel right. I think part of it is, like now we're stuck in this place where it's like, if we get a puppy now, which I don't know how Boo and Tucker would relate to that. I, I, I worry a little bit about Boo that he would, he would get very confused and he wouldn't understand. Like, I mean, Boo didn't understand a lot when he was younger. The older he's gotten, he gets confused about stuff and he's very, very close to Tucker. Like, he doesn't go anywhere that Tucker doesn't go kind of thing. And I think if we got a puppy, I, I worry that Boo Radley would get confused about that. Maybe he wouldn't, you know? Maybe he'd do really well, I don't know. Tanya said he does, have, he does well with the other dogs at the kennel, so I don't know, you know? Um, but, you know, the other thing is that Alex and I have really, you know, committed and devoted ourselves to being the best dog dads possible to Boo and Tucker, and it feels like we've gotten our little family there, you know, like the four of us now, and it's taken some time to get back to, I wouldn't say that we're completely over the grieving thing, because there are so many trees that are down, you guys, because of the snow, this is crazy. Um, I wouldn't say that we're over grieving pee, pee at all. Like, you know, it comes up all the time. But I think that we're definitely more like our new normal. Like, with just the four of us than we had before. Which took some time to get there and it was hard. I don't know that, like, I want to introduce something new to that right now. I think, like, if we get... And I hate saying this because then this is like down the road, but it's like, I think a new puppy in our life, whenever we do that is the next, the next phase of our life, you know? And I don't even want to think about when that's going to be or what that's going to look like. Cause basically that would mean that Boo and Tucker aren't here anymore. And I can't even imagine that, you know, it's like, Oh, I know I was going to say was when I took Pee, Pee to the vet that first time. And I said, like, how long do you think that she's he's got? And she said a year and a half. And it, it, I looked at her and she said, or I can't remember. She said, she didn't say a year and a half. She said, however old, like 13 and a half or something like that. I can't, 13. I'd like to see him make it to 13, she said. And I remember I looked at her and I started just bawling. And she goes, Peter, like, dogs don't live forever. You know that. And I said could have said 45 and I would have still reacted the same way. I mean, like, you know, 
I think that's the hard thing about it. So I think it's about, and this is really what I try to do, is giving them the best life possible, you know, and enjoying every moment that I have with them today instead of, where am I at on time? Instead of, down the hours and the minutes and the day and being like, oh, like, I hope they're here a year from now. I mean, I can't live my life like that anymore. I just can't, you know? I didn't live my life like that before my mom passed away, and I don't know what happened to me. I really don't. But when my mom passed away, it made me start looking at the world in a different way. It made me start looking at every person in my life, how long are they going to be here for? Every pet I have, how long are they going to be here for? You know, every relationship, you know, what's going to change? When are we going to... You know, it, 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 something about my mom dying, I really don't know what it is, and I even did a lot of work on it in counseling. I mean, we came up with some theories, but it was like my mom dying and I think maybe it had to do with at the time of my life that I was at and I was going through a lot of changes anyway and stuff it's like at that time I think that my mom passing away what it did was it it put this time like clock in my head where I'm constantly like looking at everything in, in that way now and like you know well how long's Boo and Tucker God, and how long does this, and how long is that, you know, that I, I constantly think about things in that way, you know, and it's like, it's no way to live, which is why my sponsor really has me focusing on living in the present, and really enjoying the present, and really appreciating the present, and really appreciating each and every moment, because, and you know, that's why it, it was really meaningful to me, when it was really, it meant a lot to me when she said to me, you know, when you did that magic book, the gratitude book, in November, you were so present each and every day because you were living in gratitude. And I've really got to do that again. My mother-in-law, when I picked her up from the airport, she mentioned to me, because she did that magic book as well, I bought her a copy of it, you know, and she loved it. She just goes on and on and on, tells everybody about it. I'm like, I didn't write the book, but I'm glad that you enjoyed it. She's so fantastic. And, um, but she's really wanting to do the Melody Beatty 40 Days and 40 Nights of Gratitude. And Oh my God, I started talking about another friend of mine. I was talking about another friend of mine that did the magic book as well, and I mentioned her name. <laughs> and I think she actually watches my uh, Peterisms videos too, so she'd be like, <gasps> or not watches my Peterisms videos. She does watch those, I know that. She watches my vlogs as well, and she'd be like, <gasps> anyway, um, I think that, um, anyway, my mother-in-law and my friend, have both mentioned to me um, that they really enjoyed doing those books. And so, um, although my friend, I don't think she finished the magic book, but um, but whatever, you get the most, you get whatever you get out of it, you know what I mean? And so, um, I think, like, it would be really good for me to pick another book or, like, a gratitude activity to continue to do on a daily basis, a regular basis, you know, so that I'm doing something that... Um, is helping me be present and stay staying in the moment and staying present and in gratitude, you know, I think that would um, be really fantastic. So I want to look at that Melody Beatty book. I want to look at some other books of gratitude too, just some gratitude journals that I have purchased because I bought a couple of them um, and just see which ones I think would be good. And maybe I'll put some gratitude exercise together of myself and do it on my Peterism's channel and see what I think about it, you know? I don't have to follow somebody else's book to do a gratitude um, thing. Maybe I'll do 30 days of gratitude on my Peterisms channel, and then every single day I'll find a different meditation about gratitude and do a different gratitude exercise every single day, and then I'll make myself do it as well. That would be actually an interesting idea, an interesting thought to do. But I don't know if everybody would follow through with that or not. So, we'll see. That's an idea. <laughs> I could Then I could put it together as a book and be like, here's my gratitude book. <laughs> I did it. I came up with it all on my own. Anyway, gratitude is a gift, you know, it's an action, it's, yes, it's an action, and yes, it is, um, 
it's a, but it's mostly a gift, you know, to be able to see the world through the eyes of gratitude is something that we have to work towards. I still have to work on it every single day just because I did it for a while and made lists doesn't mean that it comes naturally. It comes more naturally than it did before. Um, but I still have to work at it. It's like, you know, when you ask people like, do you dream? Like, what, like I'll ask Alex sometimes, do you dream in Spanish or you dream in English? You know, it's like when you, when people are learning in a new language, it's like they start dreaming in that new language. I don't know that I dream in gratitude yet, if that makes sense. Um, I think that I'm still working towards, uh, like it's becoming second nature to me, but it's not there yet. It's like when I think of something or what I'm going through, like gratitude, it's like it's not just the it's not just the reaction, and I want gratitude to be the reaction. I'm getting there, I'm close, but I'm not there yet, and I want that to be like the reaction. That when I'm going through something, it's gratitude. You know, when I wake up, gratitude. Um, when I am loving, gratitude. When I'm hurt gratitude. When I'm angry or upset, gratitude. You know? I want ad gratitude to be the language that I speak and I want it to be the response to the world that I live in. So, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but um, cause I'm trying to explain it to myself in my head and I'm like, does that make sense, Peter? Do you, do you get it? Um, but I, I don't want it to be this thing that I have to think through the process. I want it just to be there. Like, it just, it happens, you know? It's like, ouch, gratitude. Like, that's what I want, you know? Anyway. All right, you guys, listen. I'm going to listen to um, a little bit of the true crime book, so, uh, which is called Last Call, and it's by Elon Green. Read along with this if you like. It is for the book of April. And I hope you guys are having an amazing Wednesday, and I hope that you're having better weather wherever you are than we're having in Indianapolis. But hopefully it'll be melted by the time that you're watching this. So I love you guys very, very much, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you. Love ya. I always say I love ya, not love you. Okay, bye. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. And because of that mess up I had to do, one, and this is for Karen and everybody else out there that needs one. One more, I love you. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.